I'm my name from Sina and this is the first episode of Quarantine Kitchen where I'm going to try to make whatever I can with the food that's provided in this kitchen that is part of the building that I'm quarantined in. So in case you don't know, I can cook. I'm not a newbie to cooking. I haven't cooked in a while though, but this, you know, since the opportunity arose, I can access this kitchen now, decided let's try cooking again, right? So the first uh, recipe I'm going to try to make right now is a modified version of a recipe from Anthony in the Kitchen, which is a cookbook by one of my favorite Queer Eye cast members, Anthony Porosky. Anthony, if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure we're the same my great personality type. I'm just saying, but it's my modified version of his French omelets with cheese and chives. This is going to be a little hard for me because I've never really made an omelet before. French omelet is a little bit different than an American omelet. It's a little bit more wet. Yeah, I know. Don't be perverted. Okay, so it's not as cooked all the way as an American omelet. I don't have chives and I don't have the type of cheese he has for the recipe. But, you know, I'm working with what I have here. So I have some shredded mozzarella, some pepperoni I cut up, and some turkey. So let's see how my first French omelet goes. So the ingredients are two large eggs, two and a half tablespoons unsalted butter, preferably European style or cultured, flaky sea salt, such as Malden or kosher salt, one third cup coarsely grated Gruyere sharp cheddar, or Italian fontina, about one ounce, freshly ground pepper, one tablespoon finely chopped fresh chives. All right, so don't have most of those. So, <laughs> Like I said, uh, we're using mozzarella, pepperoni, turkey. I got my whisked eggs here. Big old thing of <laughs> black pepper, this bit of salt, and these packs of butter. <laughs> so. Let's go. Whisk the eggs in a medium bowl until well combined and smooth, taking care not to whip in much air. The point is to combine the yolks and whites very well. So thank you to the kitchen. I was able to already have the eggs already ready. So yeah, all right. So that's pretty much all we have to do right here. So now we're gonna take all this to the pan. I'm kind of scared. So I have a pan or skillet on this industrial size stove, so I don't want to get it too high. It says it's supposed to be on medium-low heat, so I'd rather have it low than too high. don't want to burn myself. Put one tablespoon of the butter in the pan. I don't think this is one tablespoon. I'm just eyeballing it here because YOLO. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a fun thing about cooking is I kind of like to eyeball things sometimes. So it's melting pretty quickly. I put two of these. I think two is enough. Okay, I'm just swir swirling it around the pan until the butter has melted and just begins to foam. Okay, so it's pretty much starting to foam right now and I have it pretty low. Pour in the eggs. All right. Okay, see if I can do this. Pour in the eggs. Okay, I poured them in. Working quickly, gently move the pan in a circular motion over the heat. This will keep the eggs moving and eventually cooking. Alright, so I guess that's a trick. Keep it kind of swirling over the heat so it doesn't cook quickly. Okay, it's a new trick I did not know. Learn something new every day. So I can already tell it's kind of cooking a little bit. So while you use a small rubber spatula in your other hand to stir the eggs in a loose figure eight pattern, to create, create small curds, scraping down the side of the skillet as you go. Okay, so I didn't finish reading the whole sentence, so I was just going in a circular motion, but I got my spatula here and said figure eight, so just create an eight, I guess. It's kind of hard for me, I'm more of a visual learner, it's hard for me to do this correctly without seeing how I'm supposed to do it, but figure eight. I assume it's this way, right? You're supposed to make an eight, right? <laughs> so, so I'm just doing that, scraping off the sides at the same time, cooking kind of slowly, so that's nice, but the pan is really heavy, so I'm just gonna give my hand a little break. <laughs> Continue until the eggs are mostly cooked through, but just a little runny on top, two to three minutes, okay? Just gonna do this for another few minutes. They're not really sticking together. It seems more like scrambled eggs right now. So if you can see, 
here. It's kind of hard. I don't want the eggs to fall on the camera, but they're cooking more like scrambled eggs right now. But just gonna keep keep going, keep the faith. <laughs> So after this, I'm going to remove the pan from the heat and sprinkle the omelet, now it can be called one, with salt, then the cheese. Anthony, I'm trying, okay? It's really hard <laughs> when I don't know what this is supposed to look like. This is a pretty cool technique, actually. It's like slowly cooking the eggs so it doesn't burn. So thank you for teaching me that, Anthony. I, I, Anthony, sorry. I'm not really doing figure eights now. I'm kind of like doing loose figure eights, just trying to get all the part of the egg that's being all runny, trying to get it all together. It's getting hot and my arm is getting real tired. Ooh. Just gonna give it a little break here on the edge so that way it's not all on the heat. I'm excited to start adding stuff to it soon, even if it's a mess. As long as it tastes good, that's what matters, right? Still a little bit runny, but looking like more like scrambled eggs <laughs> so I think I'll probably start adding the ingredients now since for the most part it seems to be cooked and I want it to still be a little bit runny because it's supposed to be a French omelet so remove from the heat I'm gonna turn this off so don't burn the place down <laughs> now sprinkle the omelet with a pinch of salt I'm a little bit of salt in here just a little pinch right there all right I don't like too much salt anyway then sprinkle the cheese down the center of the exposed egg. Okay, I think I probably got way too much cheese. <laughs> All right, sprinkle. Anthony, I don't know if this is what it's supposed to be looking like, but <laughs> this is what happens when I don't have visuals. I'm a visual learner. Okay, gently shake the pan so the omelet shifts towards the side of the pan opposite the handle and up the side of the pan. So I'm supposed to shift it, shift it from here to here. All right, so let's see if we can do this. Any pan tricks, I am not, I cannot do. I can cook, but I can't, I can't do pan tricks. Oh shoot, it's supposed to, he said shift. Whoops, I'm already messing up. <laughs> shift, 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 shift. Until it's the opposite side of the handle where the pan is. The side, on the side. Okay, so <laughs> doing the best I can. And this pan, like I said, is really heavy. So it's right here, but. Since I'm making my own modified recipe, I'm gonna add, you know, the rest of my toppings on right now. Adding turkey and pepperoni, probably way too much. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's fun with cooking, right? All right. So this part is supposed to fold up over here. It's supposed to fold over. Okay. I'm multitasking right here. I'm my own camera person with this GoPro <laughs> and this camera, <laughs> and then I'm cooking. Wow, this is not coming out <laughs> real good. It's supposed to fold over. Okay, you know what? That's that's good enough, right? Okay. Okay, using the spatula, roll up the omelet, then, oh my gosh, roll up the omelet, then flip it seam side down onto a warm serving plate. Oh, shoot, okay. I probably should have cooked it more, but you know what? That's life, okay? That's life. You just gotta, gotta go with it. So that's what it looks like right now. Beautiful, huh? Aren't you jealous? Doesn't it look del <laughs> delicious? Final product right there. I know, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> this is my first time making any omelet. So we're gonna slide it onto the place right here so you can see the beauty. <laughs> it's supposed to kind of slide onto itself. So definitely looks very creamy and cheesy, so that's that's cool. <laughs> you want some cheese. Okay, beautiful. Could definitely use some chives now just to make it look pretty, just for a presentation. Okay, so <laughs> here you go. It's final product. Oh look so exquisite, right? Exquisite, beautiful. It's my first ever um <laughs> French omelette and omelette in general um, didn't look more like scrambled eggs, like really runny scrambled eggs. I tried. I tried. There's some, I, I can cook. There's just something about omelettes. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't. I don't know. It's the technique, something in the pan. I told you I'm not good with any pan tricks, techniques. 
like I said, presentation, yeah, it might not be the best, but it's about the taste. That's the most important thing. So, let's try it. Mmm. I mean, definitely very cheesy and creamy. I know this is not what Anthony intended because it's supposed to have other fancy cheeses in there and chives, but it's still pretty good. I probably put way too much pepperoni because <laughs> I taste more pepperoni than eggs. So yeah, if you do use pepperoni, don't use too much. So at least it tastes good. Yeah, that was my first sorry attempt at <laughs> French omelet. So if any of you guys have any tips, please any chefs on making American omelets, French omelets, just the technique with the pan, you know, once this quarantine is over, if you're willing to come on my show and help me how to actually make an omelet, like, well, I would appreciate it, because that's, I can't, I can't, there's something with those pans. Now I can taste more cheese and eggs, so yeah. Thank you so much, Anthony, for inspiring this video and writing that amazing cookbook. It's, first of all, gorgeous. It's a gorgeous cookbook. Beautiful pictures of, well, I mean, Anthony's pretty good looking, but the pictures of the food are also really good. It's really great to read the stories behind the recipes. And there's so many recipes in there that look delicious, so I highly recommend you order it and try to make as many as you can at your home. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this inspired you to just be creative and use whatever you have around to make some food. Even though it doesn't look good, as long as it tastes good, that's what matters, right? You know, because most of the best restaurants, best places to eat are places that may not look the best, but the food is awesome. So don't judge a book by its cover and don't judge a meal by its cover either. All right, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!